In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you some cool stuff you can create with gradients. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel, and let's dive right in. There are mainly two gradient effects. The first one is the gradient ramp, which you can find under effects and generate. Let's add it to a solid. You can use it as linear or radial ramp. You can change the start and end of ramp positions and the colors, which is fantastic. It's only two colors though. There's a thing you need to know. Color gradients are always difficult on screens. You might have seen these ugly artifacts, which are called color bending or posterization. Why? Screens often can't display enough color depth, so they skip parts. The other reason is the compression or bit depth of your movie. So you might want to check the bit depth of your composition and increase it to at least 16 bit by holding Option or Alt and clicking on this field here. If you're going to render out a compressed movie, you should add some noise, like 3 to 5% no color noise. This is called dithering. Noise breaks up the hard lines or bands. You can also add some rim scatter in the gradient effect, that helps as well. The second effect is the four color gradient. I quickly adjust the colors into a dark purple blue color range. It has four color points that can be animated. You could animate the colors as well. Blend, higher values, create more gradual transitions between colors. Jitter is like noise. All right, let's animate it using some basic expressions to make it procedural. We add an expression to point one by clicking on the stopwatch while holding Alt or Option. Then we add wiggle to the expression field and in parentheses 0 0.5, 100 which means the point wiggles 0.5 times per second, max 100 pixels, as you can see here. Let's copy the expression, add expressions to the other point properties, and paste the expressions to them. And if you press E twice, you can see all your expressions in the timeline. Right now, all color points behave the same. So let's change some of the numbers so that they behave more uniquely. Let's see. The first one is a bit too fast. Let's slow it down again. And let's adjust the starting positions of the color points. Awesome. Let's play around some more. We use the Effects and Presets window to add Turbulent Displays. Amount, around 80. Size, quite small, around 10. And let's increase the complexity to 5. I'll quickly brighten one color to make it more visible. We created a more frosted or painted look. Let's duplicate the layer and set the blending mode of the layer to Add. And the gradient suddenly is much brighter and shinier. One more thing. Let's duplicate the layer again. This time we change the color point positions. Then let's add one more effect. A transition, Venetian blinds. We increase the transition completion, the width, and change the direction. This easy, we made that animation much more interesting. Okay, let's say you have a radial gradient ramp and you want to animate the start but you want to keep the distance to the end point. Let's open the gradient ramp property. Simply link the end of ramp to the start of ramp. Both have the same position. Then we need to add the distance here in the expression field of end of ramp, plus 500 for example. And the end moves along, keeping the same distance. We could animate the start of ramp with a wiggle expression again. Wiggle? And in parentheses, let's say 1,300. Then let's duplicate it a few times and set the blending mode to color dodge, for example. And you get a pretty cool light effect. Thanks for bearing with me so far. I recently started a newsletter. It'll help you to improve as a motion designer. So you might want to join it. There might also be an exclusive freebie waiting for you. Link is in the description. Shape layers. Let's double click on the rectangle tool to create one. They have a gradient fill option, both linear and radial. Use these two blue handles to adjust the start and end point. Or change it here in the gradient fill property. Let's scale the shape down a bit. And you have the same options for the stroke. 
let's use different colors. And just like with the gradient fill, you can change and animate the start and end point in the property. Or use the handles. In contrast to gradient effects, you can add more colors to your gradient, which is really cool. Alright, let's use some of the stuff from before and add some color gradients to these shapes to create a soft and shiny look like this. Let's start with the background. We turn the solid fill into a radial gradient. Let's change the colors. We delete this middle color point. Turn the right color into bright blue. And adjust the color midpoint. Let's adjust the start and end point position. I think, yeah, we need to swap the colors. We want the purple to be at the edges, like a vignette. And we want the blue to shine behind the round shape. Awesome. Let's add turbulent displays to break up the gradient a little bit. Amount, 200. Then we add noise. Amount, 3%, no color noise. Next, the circle back shape. We switch the stroke fill into a linear gradient fill. Change the colors from white to a dark purple. And adjust the start and end, so that the left side is white, it turns purple towards the bottom right. Then we take care of the fill. Use a linear gradient fill. <laughs> Let's change the colors. We start with a very bright pink and leave the purple. We adjust the start and end. Bright towards the upper left side, dark towards the lower right. Then we right click on the layer and add a layer style. Bevel and emboss, which adds some more detail. We open its property, size 250, soften 16, angle around 140 degrees, highlight color white, shadow color <laughs> a dark purple. Here's the difference, it adds more volume to the shape. Then let's copy and paste the layer style to the other two circles in the front as well as the gradient fill property. Paste them into the ellipse one group and delete the existing ones. Then let's adjust some colors. Same with the stroke property. We copy and paste it. Delete the existing ones. Make sure the stroke is above the fill in the stacking order. To add more depth, to the scene, we blur the shape in the background, like it is out of focus, by using a Gaussian blur effect. Blurriness around 12. The box is pretty easy. We change the solid fills into gradient fills. Finally, let's add some overall light. We add a new solid to the top. Color a very bright yellow. Then we grab the ellipse tool and add a mask. On the upper left half, where the light comes from. We open the mask property and add a mask feather. Awesome! To see how I animated the scene, make sure to check out the free project file. Subscribe to my newsletter for more content, links are in the description. On the left side, I've added some videos you might like. Thanks for watching this one, see you in the next one. Bye guys!